So tonight's demonstration is going to be by Greg Bray of Bray's Wood Turning. And similar to prior demonstrations, please keep your comments about how you would do something until the end of the demo. So without further ado, this is Greg. Greg, welcome. Here several weeks ago, uh, Dane called me and I wanted to know if I would do a demo. And uh, we had a run through a couple of things. And he asked me if I would do something very simple for some beginning turners. And uh, here's what I've come up with. Uh, we got some bud vases out of just a limb that might fall out in your yard. And uh, they have uh, got a glass tube in them. These are flyers that I just cut a while ago uh, before it got dark out in the yard. So the Easter flyers are already out. And you can do different styles. Uh, you come up with your own thing because this is, you know, I'm sure people do done all kinds of these things. And... Uh, these are something that really sell in craft shows. Uh, if you are one that goes to a lot of craft shows, uh, this here, these things here is quick to turn, easy to turn, and they will pay for your boot. And uh, here's another one. It's uh, little tea light candle holders. Very simple to turn. I mean, these are just stuff that limbs go down in your yard. I turned these out of sassafras. Um, I've turned them out of cedar and just wh whatever you got that comes down in your yard. Uh, it's very simple. So let's get on with the demo. That's what we're going to be doing. And um, first thing I'm going to do, I've got a, got a piece of uh, <coughs> press. Uh, this here is uh, between centers. And uh, let me just make sure everything's locked down before we start. Uh, it's a seriously beautiful shot, um, camera camera shot, beautiful. Okay, the tools I'll be using tonight, is basically, I, the first thing I'm going to do is, uh, it's going to be the bow gouge. I'll also use a little easy wood tool, scraper, of course, a farting tool. And then to put the tenon uh, dovetail on that tenon, I will actually use this skew. So that's the four tools basically that I would use. You can use whatever you want to use, uh, whatever comes up. Now, there's one thing I want to talk about. Let me let me get this started first. When I take this bow gouge and I cut into these uh, this bark, I want that bevel is actually right here is going to be pointed in the direction that I want to shape. And as long as I'm riding, change that from riding the bevel to sliding the bevel. And you can see right there, that is a very clean cut. Uh, you almost wouldn't even have to sand with it. So I've got some bark out of the way. So the next thing I want to do is I want to come in here and I'm going to take the easy wood tool and I'm just going to start to make my tin. bit more. Make a slight dovetail on there. 
And while it's in this position right here, I'm going to go on and work on this bottom just a little bit. And again, as you start into that bark, the angle of that uh, bevel right there is, is your target. It's just like shooting a rifle. You got them sights in and you just want to follow that all the way to. I'm going to leave that right there. You come back and dress it when we get it turned around. Take this off. Okay, all right, here we go. If you just join us, is slightly confused. One of his camera angles is flipped, so he, he doesn't he doesn't have a headstock on his right hand side. But look, we're seeing some fantastic work. Uh, I love this stuff with the bark exposed. I'm going to put a little pressure on this before I tighten this down. And I always take, every time I do something, I always take the key out of the chuck. I don't want to leave it in there because you never know. I know a guy did that one time and ended up turning the lathe on and ended up breaking his uh, tool rest. So, got that turned around like that. And the next thing I'm going to do, I'm still going to leave my shell stock up here. Uh, just for safety uh, reasons. Anytime you leave it up there, go on and do so. Now this next one, I want to start on this top and, and I'll just kind of sneak up on it. I just want to, I just want to cut some off. Before I get too far along, I want to uh, kind of flatten this up. I'm back to my bow gals. Now I want to take this and I want to just come down in here and just undercut it a little bit. Let's 
just a little bit of a knot right there. Just take that off. explain something uh, a lot of times when I'm teaching classes and frame direction is something that is very very important <clears throat> a lot of times you know the grains running this way in the in this base and sometimes you don't understand what happens but make make you a little uh, diagram like this because if you're out here and you're turning a piece of wood, I am sliding and laying those fibers down, just like this right here, when, I, when I'm out here. Now, if it was, let's say if it was side grain, it would be like this. So it would be right opposite, and I would come back this way and lay, lay the fibers down. So if you'll make you some different things like this, uh, here's one for a vase, and then here's one for a bowl, uh, this would be side grain, and it, it would just help you as you lay these tools on here just to see which way the grain's going. And if you was doing a bow that was in grain, it would be just like this. So as you're on the inside here, you could understand that as this grain was going here on the inside, you would be coming up this way. Uh, and, and versus going down in the bow, you would be laying the fibers down. Now, on the inside, we're looking at just this little uh, quarter inch piece here. So this just illustrations that uh, I use in some of the classes that will help you understand grain direction. Now that we got this uh, done, it looks pretty good. The next thing I want to do while I'm in this position is uh, let me shake this up. I coat this thing with lacquer sanding sealer and acetone. Paper towels here. All of my natural edge bowls are done this way. I mix uh, lacquer sanding sealer and acetone together 50 50, and then I will knock this off here in a minute. And I just coat this thing just like this. Poke the whole thing, the bark. Well, this is going to dry really, really fast. Don't breathe too deep. I'm going to turn my lathe down and I'll, I'll turn it on. Let's do it, let it run there just for a minute. Why, why do you use acetone instead of uh, alcohol adding to the sanding sealer? Instead of alcohol? I've, I've always just used acetone. That's just something that uh, evaporates really, really fast and it penetrates, it penetrates deep down into the... Uh, it, it penetrates deep down into the pores of the wood. It, uh, is your sanding sealer an alcohol base or lacquer? It's regular lacquer sanding sealer. Oh, it's lacquer sanding sealer. Okay, okay. You just you answered the question. I've been using alcohol base. That's what... okay. all right. All right. Yeah. Uh, I've always used lacquer. I grew up in the cabinet shop and what we had laying around. Uh, I've always used that for my sanding sealer. I would have let that sit there and run. It's almost dry anyway. Now, at this point, I will take uh, some CA glue and I will saturate 
this bark where it goes on. Right there where it goes in the wood. And I will go all the way around this bark, gluing this bark down. And this is the way I do my natural edge bows, just like this. And I will glue them down with the thin CA glue. It doesn't matter what brand you use. I, there's a lot of different brands out there. I know a lot of people have their preference. I really like the clear one. The, cl the what? The clear one. The clear one. The glue? Yeah, I, I told somebody the other day he gets CO and he got the dark or the black gap filling CA and uh -huh. kind of misunderstand the directions. Hmm. So be careful what you order when you're doing catalog orders. Now, one thing that will happen by using the sanding sealer and acetone, uh, and you'll find this a lot, is this here will put that lacquer sanding sealer and acetone down on there first, and then you come back and you use this CA glue. If it runs down into the white part of the wood, it won't leave a glue line. And if it does leave a, a little bit of a glue line, when you sand it, it'll take it right off. Mm -hmm. Now, I use, always use a uh, accelerator. And especially before I turn the lathe on, I just, I'll just give it a shot. And then I'll stand aside before I apply the pyre. Just let it glue, dry a little bit. And one thing you don't want to do when you come back from the eye doctor, you don't want to come out here and be gluing something down because these glasses I've got on right now, uh, these glasses I've got on right now has got a little spot of CA glue on them. The very first day I got back from the eye doctor, just getting my glasses. So I didn't have the face shield on, but I, these glasses, when I buy glasses, I get the polycarbon. It's a uh, safety glass. And uh, so, don't ever let your safety glasses take the place of this right here. This is important. Okay. Let me get this with the sanding paper. One question. Got a, got a question here. It says, why do you use the C glue after sealing the wood? Wouldn't this stop the glue from penetrating into the bark? It is. That's a good question. It will help lock this bark down. And uh, it'll still penetrate because I, I can see it was soaking it up. As you put that on there, it is soaking that uh, glue right in. And uh, the, the lacquer sanding sealer, uh, you know, one thing about the lacquer sanding sealer is going to keep from uh, it's going to keep from staining this, but it will penetrate that bark. And that's a, that's a good question. Now, what I got to, since I've got this and it's all dry, the CA glue's dry and I feel safe, then I can just come in here and I got a 150 sandpaper. I'm not going to spend a lot of time sanding. And I would just come in here and I would just sand this off. Let's just switch over to a 220. And that's, that's actually really, really good. So I'm going to leave it like that. And then let's uh, take this loose. Move these out of the way. We're going to drill this out. Your AV technician is doing a great job tonight. Beautiful shots. This is my grandson. He's uh, 
on my YouTube videos. He's he's the one who does all the videos. If it wasn't for him, I couldn't do videos. Uh, this is the tubes that go in. I got three different sizes. Uh, and I think Mark Soleil last week uh, said, well, you can get these. I've got, I don't know, maybe 500 of these things that somebody gave me about 15, 20 years ago. So I wouldn't know where they come from. Uh, but I think Mark, Mark Soleil had a, a place where you can get it. Somebody would put that in his chat on where you could get those tubes. Uh, you might be able to buy them at a, a Hobby Lobby or something like that also. You can buy them in bulk at Uline. Uline? Okay. There you go. Where I get my shipping supplies. They have them, yes. Mm -hmm. You want to make sure uh, that you got your depth. And I know what the depth of this is going to be. And we've got plenty of room to work with here. So you want to turn your lathe down pretty slow when you're drilling this out. <clears throat> Where'd you buy your bit, Bray? This, where'd I buy the bit? Yes. I'm thinking I bought this one at Home Depot or Lowe's. It's, it was a long bit. I'm pretty sure that's where I bought it. I'm not positive. Is it a Brad Point bit? No, it's not a Brad Point. I, I don't do the Brad points. Uh, uh, it seems like I get a better result just out of the straight drill bits like this. Mm -hmm. Same. Guys, if you if it turned as if you're in doubt of where to find them, check an older hardware store, a real hardware store. Uh, plumbers and electricians used to use that a lot. Uh, penetrate beams and all, which it just doesn't really happen in wood in turning any uh, carpentry anymore. But I found them at the good old fashioned hardware store. There's one uh, place, uh, and I, I'm getting ready to go look for a certain size. Is uh, I'm going to go to an electrical shop because they got a lot of long drill bits that they use there. So I'm going to try there for this one particular size, and hopefully they they can either get it for me or order it for me. always good when they say we don't handle that is to say can you check your catalog ace hardware carries the longer bits home depot does up here too yeah yeah but if we don't support our little box stores they won't be there so we'll try the neighborhood mm -hmm. store first My heart's broken when I see another lumberyard close up. It's almost criminal. If it's an unusual size that you need, McMaster Car would probably have it. There Correct. you go. They got they got everything. Right. Oh yeah, car shops or Napa, Granger, MSC Direct, ESC. I know Amazon has those drill bits because I ordered one, and then I didn't remember why I ordered it. It came like three weeks later and it's like, why did I order this? Cause you could. Then, yeah, well, well, it's one of those, you know, <laughs> yeah. I, I, I was sitting here on the computer watching somebody else do this and I just popped over to Amazon and put it in my shopping cart. You know? I'll but order a metric, about, about, metric. Okay. Yeah, about, back, I, think back five demo. Eight, I think it was a five eighths inch bit, but about two weeks later, the tubes I ordered came and then I was like, oh, that's what the drill bit's for. <laughs> okay. Uh, what, what I didn't turn my air compressor on and it's too loud and I'm not going to do that. Uh, but what I would do is blow this out and then I would take and I would measure and make sure this, this here will work in there uh, and fit all, right, all the way down where it's not sticking up. That would be what I would do now, but I'm not going to blow it out because I don't want to turn my air compressor on and be too loud for y'all. Is that all right? Yeah. Yeah, that's fine. Okay, the, the last thing I want to do is I want to come in here, spin it, make sure I don't hit. And then 
put my live center back in and uh, run it up here just to give me some stability and then I'm going to park this off. And make sure it don't hit. Come in here with a Japanese shop saw. And I just saw the rest of it off. And then to take this little nub off, I use a uh, little small drill and uh, I just turn this nub off. Just like that. Now, and that makes a re really, really good item just to sell at a craft show. Give us gifts. Uh, you know, the flowers are starting to bloom and uh, take advantage of that. 